Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of the Negro Way of Life and Biblical Coincidences Part 3. And to you, our dear viewer, it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, there is no religion higher than truth and no faith greater than fact. Anonymous. And from Marcus Garvey liberate the minds of men and ultimately you will liberate the bodies of men and to our hebrew israelite brothers and sisters this is not an attack on you or your religion we only want you to re-examine your belief to know that it is wrong to use the lies of the slave master as the foundation of your own faith we want to get you to compare Deuteronomy 28 in the English Bible with Deuteronomy 28 in the original manuscript from where they created or copied or produced the English Bible. Forgive us if we have offended you in any way. Thank you. And before you attack us, please provide us with any West African historical record that predates 1200. That is 1200, 1300, 1400. 1434 was when the slave trade started so we're looking for any record you know that predates 1200 and if you are unable to let us know if negroes did not exist as at then remember the slave trade started circa 1434 where were the negroes in 1200 and before why does the negro history begin and end in 1619 synopsis it is highly likely that the Negro's way of life was plagiarized and used to write the Bible. The Negroes were practicing what the Bible said prior to the imposition of Christianity on them. If we can establish that they did and show that they were told the book, that the Bible, was written by their God, then it confirms their way of life could have been plagiarized. And remember, if the slave master is unable to produce the original manuscripts from where they created the Bible, it becomes very clear that they cannot explain where they got it from. And here is how we will proceed. We shall try to examine this by looking at 1611 KJV as the time the Bible was made available to everyone. Remember, it was forbidden to have it in any other language other than Latin as at that time. And then, the printing press was invented circa 1440s, and by 1714, which is just barely 100 years after 1611, the Negroes worshipped the Lord of Heaven and abhorred Christianity. So between 1611 and 1714, it's only 103 years. So it debunks their claim of civilizing Negroes by their religion. And the slave trade started circa 1434 and ended in that format circa 1900. So we have to proceed by looking at some background and then use that to see where they could have gotten the Bible from. Now remember, they have a lot of historical records there. But we have to look at the substance, the ones that are practicable. Remember, you have nothing to do with how many wives Abraham had. You have nothing to do with how many wives Solomon had. The important thing is obedience is greater than sacrifice. So we're going to look at the laws that are enforceable. The laws that the Most High could have created if indeed he created any directly the way they put it and see which one could have been the source of the book they wrote. Let us then reference a new account of some parts of Guinea and the slave trade containing the history of the last conquest of the kingdom of Wida by the king of Dahomey. The author's journey to the conqueror's camp where he saw several captives sacrificed, etc. And it was by Captain William Snellgrave and it was published in 1734. And there we see the following. Now notice that books published at that time 
we are all written by mostly military men and very few missionaries. This should tell you that they didn't go there with peace or any good news. It was with war. So, but our interest in this book is to look at the map of the area at that time so that we'll be sure where we are talking about. So, you see the map of the area at that time. Remember, this is as at 1734 and this is what the place looked like. It says it's Upper Guinea or Guinea proper, which is what we are interested in so that when we refer to Guinea, you don't think it's the Guinea of today. You see where they called it and they wrote it so you understand what we're saying and you can see where it says gold coast which is where you have ashanti today you have the ghana it was the gold coast that was renamed ghana so you see the homey kingdom on top those ones were completely desolated with slave raids so most of them were negro kingdoms so it's important we know this so that when we say guinea coast of guinea you understand where we are talking about so you don't think we are talking about somewhere else because those old records will reflect these towns. Now, remember the slave master understands this game. When he changes the name, he makes it difficult to reconnect them in future, which is what he does. So, we know this very well. So, let us then move forward. Let us then reference geographical survey of Africa. The rivers, lakes, mountains, productions, states, populations, etc and a letter to Lord John Russell by James McQueen Esquire and it was published in 1840 and there we see the following and this gives us an idea of how the Negroes got to where they are today so we see where it says the real Negro race and who remain unconquered by the Mohammedan arms and unconverted to Mohammedan faith where from six to eight centuries ago which we know six to eight centuries ago would be 600 to 800 years ago driven into this portion of africa where the very high mountains and native forests which run east and west in the parallel of nine degrees to ten degrees north latitude have hitherto sheltered them from the incessant attacks of the fanatic moor and the more fanatic negro mohammedan convert so you need to understand the power of these religions. Now remember somebody like Malcolm X and somebody like Martin Luther King Jr. They are supposedly brothers. But you see how religion divided both of them. And of course the slave master had picked the one he wants Negroes to look up to because he knows the Negroes run after their master. So you see how they chose who you have to celebrate and who you cannot celebrate. And you can't even say it. So even if Malcolm fought for you, you are only allowed to celebrate who the slave master wants you to celebrate even though something happened to both of them the same way too so you have to bear this in mind let's just move forward so our reason for providing this information is so that you don't think the negroes are wherever they are today and they have been there all their life we are not sure what could have happened then it's a subject of a different research which you two could conduct but our interest is to show you where they recorded at about 800 years ago this is as at 1840 that this book was written so if you add or subtract 800 years before they were still chased away from somewhere we're not sure where so you understand that the oppression has been going on since the beginning of time because they believe that the negroes were created to remain slaves forever which we are going to show you that they are still slaves till today so we see where on the next page it says the contiguity also of these negro states with the atlantic from which they have been abundantly supplied for 250 years with powder and firearms by their trade with europeans has enabled them even more than their natural barriers and defenses to oppose the restless moors who are only enabled to obtain such supplies of the munitions of war to a limited degree by the caravans across the great desert from the shores of the mediterranean to this cause chiefly is it owing that this portion of africa has hitherto escaped from the Mohammedan faith and from the Mohammedan yoke. Note, they called it yoke, so that you don't think you are looking, getting any salvation. They said yoke, a circumstance in one point to be regretted because wherever that faith and that yoke have been introduced, an end has been put to all those groveling superstitions 
and human massacres and human sacrifices to which we have alluded so our interest is if we ultimately show you that there were no human sacrifices it will effectively also show you that they have an interest that is why they don't want the negro to practice his original way of life and then we'll be able to show you that it is from the negro's way of life that they copied what they have in the book they brought back the only difference is while they are trying to apply those things contained in that book they are stopping the negroes from doing so knowing that they will be powerless as far as they are unable to practice their original way of life they will remain slaves which we are ultimately going to show you as we move on perhaps not in this video anyway but along the line so let us reference a view of all religions in the world with the several church governments from the creation till these times also and it was written by Alexander Ross and published in 1683 and there we see the following remember 1683 is very close to 1611 when the King James version of the Bible was made or printed or whatever whenever they produced it and before then they were forbidden from having Bible in English language so they only had the Latin copies and all that which means it's not everybody that could have had it and it's only those who could read Latin and it wasn't for people to read it was for the priest to tell the people what he wanted them to know it wasn't for everyone's consumption so you bear this in mind so this is 1683 so you understand how other places were at that time now this was talking about Europeans and their sun worship and it says it was also a part of sun worship to erect high altars and to sacrifice to him under the name of Jupiter upon the highest hills because they thought it fit that he who was the chief god the sun they are talking about should be worshipped on the chief places and the highest in dignity should be honored in the highest places of situation hence he was named whatever I can, we can read that jupiter on the mountains of these high places we read in scripture remember to ask yourself which scripture do they read this is by 1683 they used also so the honor of the sun to build their temples and erect their altars towards the east note this very well it's the sun worship that they were still doing at that time this is 1683 i think this may be the genuine meaning of the saxon idol which by them was called Crodo, which Shirendo de G. Germanius or whatever thinks to be Saturn. So when you hear that they claim that Saturn is Satan, you have to understand what they are saying. And do otherwise interpret it when they did express the sun as king of the planets and chief ruler of the world. They painted him sitting on a throne holding a scepter in his hand and a two in his right out of the right side of his mouth came out thunder out of the left lightning and his head sat an eagle under his feet was a dragon and round about him sat twelve gods the throne scepter and sword may signify the majesty and power of the sun who by his heat caused thunder and lightning the eagle showed the swiftness of this his motion and his piercing eye as discovering all things by his light his trading on the dragon may show that he by his heat subdued the fiercest creature and most perseverous vapors the twelve gods may signify the twelve signs in the zodiac and the twelfth month of the year when they did express the here light and motion of the sun they painted him like a man holding with both hands a flaming wheel when they did present the martial courage and military heat of soldiers excited in their hearts by the heat of the sun they set him out like an armed man holding a banner in one hand with whatever but our interest is for you to see what the Danes. this is around denmark and all that you saw it in part one of this series what they were worshiping at that time and how they got your 12 apostles and all that so you understand what 
may be going on. This is 1683 publication about the dance. But let us move forward. Let us also reference the New Testament in the original Greek. And it was by Brooke Frost Westcott and Fenton John Anthony. And it was published in 1881. And there we see the following. Sources of the text of the New Testament. The original orthographs of the apostolic writings are lost beyond all reasonable hope of discovery and are not even mentioned by the post-apostolic authors as being extant anywhere or as having been seen by them. They perished probably before the close of the first century with the brittle paper then in ordinary use, the Egyptian papyrus like all other ancient writings with the exception of a few that were accidentally preserved in Egyptian tombs and mummies or under the lava of Vesuvius at Herculaneum and Pompeii, God has not chosen to exempt the Bible by a miracle from the faith of other books but has wisely left room for the diligence and research of man who is responsible for the use of all the facilities within his reach for the study of the Bible. He has not provided for inspired transcribers any more than inspired printers, nor for infallible translators any more than infallible commentators and readers. That's our interest. At least you now know that they don't have the original manuscript. And the only reason they don't have it is because they don't want you to see that whatever they claim is the original has something totally different from what they are giving you. Now remember, this is like second-hand information that you have. Let's say your father gave somebody a message to give you and the person decides to give you the wrong one. Let's assume the person has a recorded voice of your father giving the message. Now the person tells you that he lost that original voice simply because he knows that if you hear the original voice, it's different from what he's telling you. So this is very simple. They can find what happened in the, before the flood. They can find everything, but they don't have the original manuscript of the New Testament. And as far as we can say, if any page is wrong or missing or however or concocted, then it is safe to assume that almost all the pages were concocted. So it's important you bear this in mind. And it shows you on the right of the page that the other source is the Greek manuscripts. Remember the Greeks. The Americans, they are the Greeks as well. So Europeans are just Greeks. And it says that the manuscripts or codices are the direct and most important sources. The number now over 1700 counting all classes and new ones may yet be discovered wherever they are finding them from. Now ask yourself, if the papyrus that was used to write the New Testament has been destroyed beyond all hope of recovery or discovery or wherever they find it. How come the Old Testament is there even though they don't have the manuscript of any at all? No manuscript. So when they say they translated from the original um, tongues, your duty should be to cite that original tongue wherever they are translating it from. The reason they use translate is to deceive you to think that there is some original when there is none. So you need to bear this in mind before we move forward. But at least we have to show you some background before we move into why we tell you that they plagiarized the Negro way of life. Let us also reference the Annals of the English Bible by Christopher Anderson. And it was published in 1849. And there we see the following. And reading from within the highlighted portion, it says, At last, therefore, between the years 1450 and 1455. Remember the slave trade started circa 1434. This is 1450. For it has no date. Their first great work was finished. This was no other than the Bible itself. The Latin Bible. Altogether unknown to the rest of the world. This was what had been doing at Metz in the west. When Constantinople in the east was storming. And the Italian brief men our copies were so very busy with the appens. These Latin Bible of 641 leaves formed the first important specimen of printing with metal types. The very first homage was to be paid to the sacred volume, which had been sacrilegiously buried, nay, interdicted so long 
as if it had been with pointing finger to mark at once the greatest honor ever to be bestowed on the art and infinitely the highest purpose to which it was ever to be applied so you see when they discovered printing you see when they printed the first the latin bible so whatever they tell you it's incumbent on you to go and look at it based on the dates and time if you're dealing with somebody who has always been lying to you what does it take to start double checking whatever he has ever told you whatever it is even if it is your age you can go check it to see if it is correct even when you know but just try to check you'll be surprised what you will find because a liar is a liar and lies in everything including things that make no sense things that you have no need to lie for a liar will always lie about it so let us move forward though and from the same book we see where it says thus as if it had been to mark the noblest purpose to which the art would ever be applied the first book printed with movable metal types and so beautifully was the bible like almost all original inventors Gutenberg made nothing by the discovery at which he had labored for at least 20 years from 1435 to 1455 so you see that the printing press was invented before they printed the bible and above all the slave trade started before they created that your Deuteronomy 28 now the question becomes it is incumbent on you to go and find out the original of where they got Deuteronomy 28 from. That's all you need to do. And check if it is exactly the same thing as what they have in the one they gave you. The reason they are telling you the original is missing is so that you don't get to see that what they told you is a lie. But then, let's move to the Negro way of life to see if we can find out where they got what they are saying from. Remember, these ones are saying the manuscripts are missing they don't have a manuscript of where they got it from now let us see how the negroes were living and that will tell us who actually has the original or the manuscript where they stole it from let us reference a new voyage to guinea describing the customs manners soil climate habits buildings education manual arts agriculture trade employment languages ranks of distinction habitations etc written by William Smith and it was published in 1744 and there we see the following he says this gentleman having resided in Guinea remember we showed you a map about where Guinea was at that time a long time was undoubtedly acquainted with the several customs of the Guineans and likewise with their passions inclinations and dispositions which rendered his company diverting and as the substance of our several conversations cannot i believe be displeasing to the reader i shall here give his remarks therein i have lived in guinea said he upwards of ten years and if my innate desire of seeing old england and london the place of my nativity did not urge my departure i might continue here live quietly and die in peace when i first came here i was as all others are quite unacquainted with the nature and dispositions of the inhabitants and of the several customs of the country but time and observation soon disclosed them to me i thought for instance that polygamy or the having a multiplicity of wives at one time was a very bad custom but i soon found that my aversion to it was only the prejudice of a different education for when i was a little habited to this custom i found it resembled the method practiced by the patriarchs of the old testament however it may be observed that a man is not obliged to have more wives than he pleases and it is common for the most prudent of the natives who live by merchandise to have no more than two or four at most the reasons they assign for this practice are the following first that it was handed down to them by their fathers so our interest is how it was handed over to them by their fathers now remember that's what the bible says as well not that the bible said they hand over wives or anything it was 
it is contained in the Bible that people could marry two wives. So now you see that the people that were living according to what they have there is obviously what they did. They lifted what these people were doing, put it in the book, and came to present it to them and told them that it is your God that wrote the book. Oh, look at what it says, which is the same thing you do. So you we take note of that very well. We don't need to go down to all the reasons they proffered or provided for having more than one wife. But remember, it was not a law. Now think about it. Is it not the same thing that the Muslims are coming with? Four wives. From where? If you even go back to history, you'll see that it used to be six. They changed it to four. So when you look at these changes, you should begin to ask yourself, did the Most High come down to change these things? The answer is no. But you see how they made it look like we have two gods or one god if you choose and it is approved this is how you can only worship him either through maker or through our own decisions and all that and unfortunately it's only the negro that is not allowed to worship his creator the way he chooses faith that's the important thing to note here because the religions are free for others everywhere it's only the negro way of life that they consider that should be stopped by all means possible so you understand what we're talking about so the second reason they proffered here was that they never cohabit with a woman when she is pregnant or menstruous thirdly that two or more being rivals for the affection of the man they study and endeavor to please him and fourthly that as a man may have variety at home he is not so prone to seek it abroad but our interest is they do not cohabit with menstruous women which you can see in the bible as well so let us now go to the bible and see leviticus chapter 15 verse 19 and it says and if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood she shall be put apart seven days and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even and everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean everything also that she seated upon shall be unclean and whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes and bath himself in water and be unclean until the even and whosoever toucheth anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bath himself in water and the unclean until the even and if it be on her bed or on anything whereon she seated when he toucheth it he shall be unclean until the even and if any man lie with her at all and her flowers be upon him he shall be unclean seven days and all the bed whereon he lieth shall be unclean and verse 25 and if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation or if it run beyond the time of her separation all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation she shall be unclean every bed whereon she lieth all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of whatever but our interest is you see that the reason the slave master didn't copy this well is the negroes were doing it for the period the woman was menstruating and it was almost about four days that's just what it was but you see the eyes is seven days now think about it do you think the most high could have given people an instruction to separate the woman for seven days when the menstrual cycle is four days so because they didn't understand it they copied it remember when they brought the book they told the people that this is a book from your god and it is the same thing you have been doing that he wrote there so they wrote they read some of the parts to them and that's how they got to believe the book anyways so we are going to show you a lot more depending on how much time we have but for you to understand that they obviously copied it remember the easiest way to see that they copied the negro way of life and put it in the book is the fact that they are not getting the things right think about it why will a woman that is menstruating be separated for seven days that means for a, every month she will be separated for seven days but the menstrual cycle will just be about four days. Think about it yourself. You think the Most High could have been this uninformed, so to say. So you see that because they copied it, they did not have an in-depth understanding of how the people did it. So they chose seven days. And that's because the Negro days at that time 
were not counted like theirs so they didn't quite fully understand it for example their week in some places were about eight days four days and four days making it eight that's why they chose the whatever they chose because they obviously understood it which we are going to show you in greater detail in subsequent videos but let's just move forward and round up so from the page where we were before it tells us that i know several who live justly and soberly in this method and have often thought that the practice of too many europeans were more liable to censure who besides a wife keep two or three halots so you see for everything they accused the negroes of it's what they were doing you see the negro had one or two wives that's it but these ones had one wife and keep two or three halots but you see how they smuggled the thing and turned did a kind of population inversion that's our best way to describe it sorry we're not talking about lasers we're talking about population inversion where the people that were somewhere will be changed to something else and their position usurped that's like where the atoms move down and the other ones move up something along those lines that's what they have done so he says nay the european is really in a very dangerous fault for he is taught that such an action is contrary to the religion he professes and for which he is liable to damnation nothing of which the negro believes or is taught to believe so far from which that he herein follows the example of his ancestors and treads in the path of abraham the patriarch which undoubtedly was right so you see that the negroes had this thing they just took it and turned it upside down or took it and what you really call population inversion that's the best way we can describe it for you unfortunately english is not our first language so you understand what we're talking about just pure population inversion you can google it and read it from purely literary point of view not from a laser or technology or science point of view so they obviously usurped the negro position so now you see when the hebrew Israelites claim that they are suffering because they were not obeying or keeping the laws of the most high it is a lie what actually happened that they were deceived away from worshiping the most high so they are now worshiping the slave master's god the slave master now usurped their position this is very clear and we shall be making it clearer in subsequent editions but going further it, it tells us something in guinea it's chastity not to have commerce with a woman during her pregnancy but what europeans thinks is vicious to have is such an ab abstinence for the good long life and health of posterity of this the christian though he were convinced his religion permits and necessitates a contrary way of action for i cannot act always as i would being impelled by custom education and popular error to act contrary to the sentiments of my own mind nature is the best school her lessons are true and her dictates are universal because the negroes at that time adhered to nature if you read how they were before the slave master came with his uh, artificial type of thing you will be amazed but let us just move forward and round up and on the next page it tells us that in guinea you never hear of a rape and the reason is plain the young ladies are not taught by the priests that the gratification of their darling passion is a damnable crime as they are by the christian apostles in europe which occasions many religious girls of tender consciences to remain refractory to the incessant and passionate addresses of the astutors who sometimes through deceit and force seize the long wished for prize so you see that all the things they accused the negroes of are the, what they were doing the same way you see that the same people that have nuclear weapons everywhere are the same people accusing north korea that we probably would never have heard about until the end of time without them you see the same way saddam hussein the same way uh, libya had weapons of mass destruction that's exactly who they are so you see that that's obviously what they did to the negroes but then we may have gone too long on this video we are going to round up here and continue in the next parts but our interest is to bring out the things that the negroes were doing and compare them with what the bible is saying to see which one is actually right obviously we have shown you that they don't have an original manuscript 
so they can't even tell us where they got what they wrote from and if what they are writing in the book is totally different from what the negroes were doing it means they wrote the book and they didn't fully understand what they were copying obviously if you check what we're trying to say you can conduct the research yourself and here we come to the end of this edition of the negro way of life and biblical coincidences part three we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research and we thank you very much for listening peace